go back from New York. You ever been there? <laughs> they had a big uh, gay parade going on there when I was there. And I'd never been to one of them. And uh, I like a parade, you know. I always like a parade. So uh, <laughs> I go there. And uh, it turns out it's just a bunch of gay guys. It's a hell of a parade there, huh? Imagine that on the TV, you know, you got Willard Scott and Faith Daniels. Okay, here's the big parade. Here we go. Time for the big parade here. Oh, it's a bunch of gay guys there. Well, look at that. And, and there's some more gay guys there behind him. And, uh, and uh, there's some more gay guys. Well, hell of, a, hell of a parade just turned out to be there. Bring your kid, you know, you got him on your shoulder with some candy clothes. Okay, the big parade here, Philly. Oh, here it is here. Oh, yeah, it's a bunch of gay guys. Well, <laughs> well Billy, hell of a parade this turned out to be there. Ah, a lot of gays are coming out of the closet now, you know. It's a big thing to do now. Dick Sargent came out of the closet. You know that guy? Uh, Darren from Bewitched. He came out of the closet now, and he's, uh, uh, geez, I hope it doesn't hurt his career, right? That'd be a hell of a thing there. If he... <laughs> That'd be a bad thing. I wish gay guys come out of the closet. You know who's gay? Who the hell cares? Everybody lives together, you know? What I don't like is when nobody knows, you know, people always suspecting you of being gay. You know, you ever have that? Like, you know, your buddies be behind your back. Gee, I haven't seen Fred with a woman for a few days. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it. He asked me to go swimming with him. <laughs> oh, Fred's gay! Come on, let's go tell everybody. Fred's gay. Fred's gay. Hello, Fred's gay. <laughs> I know I don't know you. I plucked your name around from the phone book there, but uh, turns out Fred's gay. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Actually, I was reading this book. They said that uh, every guy at some point in his life questions his sexuality, like wonders if maybe they're a bit gay themselves, you know? You ever a moment like that where you wonder maybe you're gay, you know? Like maybe you're watching a TV or something there, you know? You go, geez, that Bruce Boxleitner's a good-looking guy there. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm a guy now that I think about it here. <laughs> Let me see, I'm a guy, Bruce Boxliner's a guy, and I carry the three, and I goes over there, and I... <laughs> so, who knows, huh? Hey, I was reading this, this is a, too, in a book. They said that uh, if you're afraid of homosexuals, it means that deep down inside, you're actually a homosexual yourself. Yeah. That worries me, you know, because uh, I'm afraid of dogs. You know, I like dogs. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Lately, I've had a hankering to drink out of the toilet bowl, too. You know, that's the, <laughs> that's the funny part. There, I. Yesterday, I sniffed a girl's butt out in the street. You know, I... <laughs> you believe it? it? has nothing to do with the joke, but I thought I'd get it off my chest there, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I need that hanging over me like a scythe. <laughs> ah, I bought a dog recently. Man, they're expensive, these dogs. Boy, I tell you, I go to this dog store, you know, and a guy in a salesman at a dog store, a typical salesman, dog store salesman, tries to sell me the most expensive dog in a store, you know, big $600 dog, big giant, it was a pit bull dog. You ever seen him? 600 bucks, and I was looking to pay maybe, you know, a buck or something like that. <laughs> Two bucks. That was my ceiling, two bucks. So the guy says, no, he says, why don't you buy this pit bull? He says, this will protect your valuables. You know, I don't have any very valuable, you know, I, I buy the pit bull. That would be the most valuable thing I own, you know. I <laughs> have to buy something to protect it then, you know. I'd be, be out shopping for wolverines the next day there somewhere, you know. I'd, Show me something in a timber wolf, my good man. <laughs> I'd be saying. Some good man. Oh, that's a hell of a dog to get, though, them pit bulls, you know, they kill you, those dogs. You know, just ah! rip your throat out. I want a dog to do things for, like, fetch my slippers. That's what's good about a dog, you know. Pit bull won't do it. I say, hey, pit bull, fetch my slippers there. Huh, ah, fetch my slippers there. Pit bull go, hey, I could kill you, buddy. What the hell? I, <laughs> I fetch people. That's all I fetch. I, I can fetch you a guy. That's the best I could do for you there. I, Maybe if you're wearing some slippers, you know, I could fetch a guy around <laughs> bedtime, I could bump off some guy there. And... 
And you go, all right then, nine and a half, where do you go there? <laughs> When I was a kid, it was a Doberman. That was the meanest dog around, the Doberman dog. And they'd kill you, too. They'd rip your throat out, you know. But not fast like a pit bull. Doberman always would give you a little head start there, you know. They, always... <laughs> they see you in the street. They go, hey, your house over there? Go ahead. Go on over here. <laughs> and they'd look at their timepieces. And then they'd rip your throat out. It'd be pretty, though. They'd soar through the air and rip your throat out. You don't see Dobermans around anymore. They're like the forgotten dog. Now it's all pit bull, pit bull. They get all the domestic security work and everything, you know, the Doberman can't get a job. <laughs> Once in a while, you see him on a park bench with a frisbee. I used to be somebody. <laughs> I'm a Doberman. So I didn't get a I didn't get a killer dog. I always buy a dog, you know. When I'm buying my dog, I always think to myself, hey, if he were to go berserk, would I be able to take him? <laughs> you gotta be able to beat up your dog, you know? I got a nice uh, wiener dog. One of them wiener dogs? <laughs> wiener dog can't rip out your throat or anything, you know? Unless you're lying down, you know, that'd be about the only way. You know? I have to be lying down sleeping there, you know, late at night, and the wiener dog sneak up, starts nibbling at your throat there, you know. And maybe by daybreak, he's got a hold of a vein there, he's pulling out a vein, you know. You, you, know, you wake up, how oh, get away from me, you wiener dog, what the hell are you? You think you're a pit bull or something there? You're a wiener dog, that's all you'll ever be. <laughs> Give you a hickey, that's about the worst you get out of there. You ever buy your dog a gift? That's always a weird thing. I figure you get a... I got one of rubber bones the other day. You know, he gets it, he goes, oh, great, a bone. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not a bone. Million laughs, pal. It's a... <laughs> kind of a gag item you got me there, you bastard. <laughs> my grandmother got my dog a sweater, you know, knitted him a sweater. There's a useless present for a dog, huh? <laughs> what happens if the dog gets lost? You know, he's wearing a sweater. What the hell kind of... How long is he going to survive in the alleyways with that on his back there? You know, that's a... <laughs> Them's mean streets if you're a wiener dog in a cardigan, you know. You don't last too long out there. They kill you. Okay, you guys have been great. Thanks a lot, folks. Congrats. <laughs>